Hi, everybody. My name is Phil, and I'd like to welcome you to Netflix and Phil. Today, I have a very special guest. Circle. Message. Welcome, Lisa Del Campo. Send. <laughs> Circle. Message. Hi, Phil. I'm so excited to be on your show, Netflix and Phil. It's such a clever name, and I can't wait to chat with you about all different things. Send. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm so excited to chat with you. I know we, I think we connected on social media and uh, mm -hmm. I had asked if you'd be interested in joining me and finally here we are. And I'm just so, so happy to chat with you. And I me have, too. I have questions about the circle, but I kind of wanted you to, before I hit record, you talked a little bit about your family and I'm curious about mm -hmm. your upbringing. You're from Washington state, correct? I am. I'm from Everett. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I was born and raised there. My mom's from there. My grandparents moved there a million years ago. So wow. yeah, we, um, my mom went to the same middle school, elementary school, and I went to the same high school as her, but for a year only Then I transferred to the rival high school. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh -oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I, I loved it there. I mean, it was, it was so much. I loved high school. I got to say. <laughs> so you enjoyed it. I did enjoy, I mean, there were definitely ups and downs for sure. But overall, when I look back at high school, I'm like, that was a pretty fun experience. Well, glad to hear it. And um, uh, going on from Everett, Washington, I saw you appear on a web series podcast and mm -hmm. you got onto the topic uh, of true crime. And yes. you had mentioned that, and I know you're an avid reader, so mm -hmm. I'm wondering, are there any true crime novels that you love? My cat's in the background. I'm so Oh, God, I love your cat. What's your cat's name? His name is Big Boy. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Hi, Big Boy. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> My so dog's active. asleep in her bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She'll um, probably pop up here. Oh, that's fine. She's more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. Is there any true crime stories from your home in Everett or any around the globe that fascinate you or excite you? Yes. Well, I started my love of true crime. Um, well, I used to watch like 2020 and those kind of shows with my mom when I was a kid and like movies of the week. I don't know if you remember those, but like ABC would have one, CBS, NBC, and they were all like crime. Like no one would tell with Candace Cameron and Fred Savage, <laughs> you know, like, Oh. Th those kind of movies and I saw one in the 80s uh, I think uh -huh. it was called The Deliberate Stranger okay. starring Mark Harmon who played Ted Bundy and okay. Ted Bundy terrorized the Pacific Northwest as well as Florida but started out in the Pacific Northwest Seattle um, in the 80s no in the 70s I think maybe the 60s so I grew up kind of knowing about Ted Bundy and my mom went to college where he was killing girls at Central Washington University where I won as well. Um, and so that just kind of, I grew up with that. And Anne Rule was my favorite true crime author. She's passed away, but she did all Pacific Northwest stories for the most part. So yeah, I just started reading those. My best friend's mom gave me her copy of um, A Stranger Beside Me. That was the Ted Bundy book uh -huh. when we were like in sixth grade and I like gobbled it up and I just started reading all of her novels. And that's kind of where I got my love for it. It's funny, you mentioned the movies of the week, et cetera, from our past, but right yeah. now, you don't have to go very far on streaming channels, cable, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. There's always some true crime something. I know. <laughs> it's true, but now there's like networks devoted to yes. just true crime. Like we didn't have that. We had the 13 channels, you know, yeah. in the 80s. Right. And right. <clears throat> we eventually got cable, but yeah, we didn't have those things. It was like movies of the week, Dateline you know, 20, 20, 48 hours. And that was kind of it. I know it's the olden days, right? At least <laughs> the olden days. But don't you feel like they were so much simpler? Like I get so stressed out about my DVR being full and like this new show started streaming and this. So I have a list and it's like, before I check something off, three new things have popped up. Sure. So it's like, I, I find it stressful. It is stressful. There's so much content out there. And I find mm -hmm. if I just sit in front of the TV, is, there's so much to digest. I'm like, where do yes. I begin? Is there yeah. anything that you love television wise movies that if you're in front of that television, you can't miss? Okay, so this just happened to me today. <laughs> um, I am a huge Bravo fan, right? Okay. So I watch every single Housewives. I watch <laughs> all the Below Decks. 
I watch, you know, Vanderpump Rules. I just started the Girlfriends in Paris, the real Girlfriends of Paris. So I watch all of them. So today Bravo had on like season four of Below Deck Mediterranean and I got sucked in again. And I'm like, I just watched this during the pandemic. Why am I watching it again? There's so many other things I need to watch, (laughs) you know, but I love it. And like every time I fly home, the Bone Collector, the movie is, Mm. is on the plane. And I think I watch it one out of every three times I fly home. So yeah, anything like that, Kiss the Girls is another movie whenever it's on, Shawshank Redemption whenever it's on, Um, Troop Beverly Hills, you know, (laughs) like Can't Buy Me Love, all of those. Like I love, I love thrillers, but I love like an 80s, 90s, like remember in the 90s, there were all those like Shakespeare remakes, like 10 Things I Hate About You, Mm -hmm. oh, I watched those, I don't know, there's something about those that I just, I love. I, I grew up with all the John Hughes movies. Yes. So you're pretty in pinks. You're some kind of wonderful. Yeah. Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club. It's mm-hmm. just embedded in my DNA. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I know. I thought that was just such a magical time, probably because we were younger. You know, it was, I don't know, just something about that time was magical. I, I, I'm in complete agreement. So we're going to talk about your show, which I'm fascinated by and just can't get <laughs> enough of. We'll talk about that in a moment. But yeah. you and I kind of share, uh, not history, but I came to learn that you used to live, I'm in Las Vegas. Oh, and nice. I was, I think I was <laughs> snooping around and I found out that you used to be a publicist here in my, my fair city. And uh-huh. I'm wondering if you can talk to us about that and maybe who some of your clients were, if you can speak yeah. that. Oh, totally. Um, so when I was in college, I changed my major three times, but not I wasn't too far in, thankfully. But I thought I wanted to do psychology first. And then I figured out there was too much math, like statistics and stuff. So I was like, nope. Got it. Then I did law because I thought I want to do like some sort of criminal law. Uh-huh. And then I was like, no, I don't really like to argue and especially in front of people. <laughs> so I said, what else do I love? TV, movies, you know, Us Weekly, all those, all those things. And so I thought maybe PR, like communications and public relations. So that's what I did. And I knew that I wanted to work in entertainment and move to LA for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I moved here in, I think, 2003. I get my dates so mixed up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it was 2003. And I interned at a PR, a little PR agency. It was mostly soap opera clients. And I just, I was working two jobs. I just wasn't making enough money. It's expensive to live here. Of course. And so my roommate at the time said, what about Las Vegas? What if we just moved there? Because I know if I moved back home, I wouldn't ever leave again. Like I would stay there. Yeah. So we did that. And I got hired at a PR company a couple weeks after I moved there. So I worked for PR Plus. It's still there. Um, and the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino was my main client back then. This was 2004. Um, so I had them. I had a, a little clothing place called Tallulogy. I don't know if it's even still there. Mm. Um, all the station casinos, the restaurants at the Wynn, because the Wynn had just opened. Right. So I did those. Um, yeah, but the Hard Rock's the one that kept me the most busy. Well, I can imagine. And they had a presence here for a long time. And now... Yeah. They're gone, but they're coming I back. I, uh, oh, they are. Yeah, I, okay. I think it's getting wow. the, the uh, um, hotel that looks that's in the shape of a guitar. Oh yeah, like isn't that one in Florida? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. <laughs> well, when I when it was my client, it was the only one that Peter Morton owned. Okay. So it was like separate. It wasn't part of it. The the other Hard Rock hotels. It had the restaurant as you remember right. in front the cafe. Um, yeah. But I don't think he owned that even. I think he just owned that hotel. Okay. So when I was there, Harry Morton worked in the marketing department um, and, and Peter was still the, the owner of it. So that it was, I don't know. It was so fun. How cool. And I to think that we could have crossed paths back then. Cause I think you we, never I, know there was, there was some crossover then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, <laughs> you, you, so you mentioned you were in LA ended mm-hmm. up in Vegas and had some, mm-hmm success so so your next role if i have mm-hmm. it correct uh you yep. still and uh back then came to support or act as a uh assistant to mm-hmm. uh, 
a gentleman that we have all come to know and love. His name is <laughs> Lance Bass of Insync, yes. and I'm that curious, little boy band. Yes, that little boy band that yeah. that uh, <laughs> uh, still popular <laughs> to this day. Yes. And um, when did that happen? How did you meet him? Did that happen in Vegas, LA, or otherwise? Or what? no? So when I was working, because it was kind of it was 2004 that I got hired. So Insync kind of had broken up went on hiatus in 2002 or three or one around that time anyway okay. so they like could so my my boss had worked with them when they would come to las vegas uh -huh. and so um it was 2005 we did um a show opening at the rio it was called eroctica so it was like this <laughs> topless like um, rock show at the, at the Rio that wasn't my client, but I, uh, we had our PR firm was small, but mm -hmm. we had a lot of clients. So not everybody could like be everywhere that they needed to be. So the night that they had their opening, the girl whose account it was had another opening somewhere else. So I covered for her and Lance happened to be in town and my boss asked him to come and he came and we became friends. Oh, cool. So that's kind of how it happened. And every time he'd come to Las Vegas, I would, you know, meet them out and set them up with restaurants and fun things to do. And we became friends. And at the end of that year, his assistant was moving on. So he asked if I would come to LA and work for him. And I said, sure. And the rest is history. Almost 17 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, yeah. and I think that's amazing because I lived in LA for a few years and mm -hmm. you hear the stories and I think more often than not, mm -hmm. it's those relationships, assistance with uh, their, um, uh, with whom they support celebrities mm -hmm. or otherwise can be um, difficult. And yeah. I, I love that you have had such a consistent relationship with him and, uh, and continue to this day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, we did have a brief, like a two year hiatus. We didn't know it was a hiatus. We thought that we were you know, just going to be friends and not work together anymore. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, so that it was 2014 to 2016. And I like freelance assisted mm -hmm. kind of. And so I got to experience other not so fun people. And I got to interview with people. And there was one person that I interviewed with. Um, I, I was with, so his, current assistant had left so the old assistant came back and was working with him in the interim until he found someone so she was interviewing people mm -hmm. and interviewed me and we talked for like an hour hour and a half and at the end she was like i'm not going to advance you because i like you too much this person's a nightmare <laughs> for and i was like thank you this doesn't surprise me at all and i i've heard the stories and we won't name names to protect the innocent but maybe after i uh stop recording you can let me know <laughs> yes I'll, I'll tell you who it was because I didn't, I didn't sign an nda but like i i don't want to expose him to the world because maybe he's a nice person i don't know uh so things are successful with lance and then mm -hmm. um Something occurred where you got an opportunity to appear on one of my favorite shows, which is on Netflix, mm -hmm. The Circle. And I'm curious, yeah. uh, before you came on board, it had already gone one season. So what were the circumstances where you were able to get cast on season two? Mm -hmm. And how did that come about? So one of my dear friends, Aaron, is from England. And he, I don't know, it was a couple years, like maybe 2016. I don't know. He was like, there's a show that you're going to love called The Circle. I got, I think it's called a VPN, like a British VPN you pay like $5 a month for. So I watched it. So I watched season one of the British version oh, and season okay. two. Yeah. So I had seen a couple of seasons. Then we got it. And I watched that season when Joey won. Mm -hmm. And that I before I was like, if there's ever an opportunity for me to go on Big Brother, I would love to go on it. And then as I got older, I was like, yeah, there's no way I would go on Big Brother. I don't like physical competitions. There's a, all the backstabbing. Like, it's it's in person, right? And um, so then I said, well, if there's an, ever an opportunity for me to do the circle, I would love to go on that. And a friend of a friend happened to be casting for it. And we were talking at my birthday party and I said how much I love the show. And he was like, you need to audition. You need to be on the show. And so that's kind of how the ball got rolling. And the rest is history. Well, and I, I, 
I don't think many viewers of The Circle realize that it is. It was born out of the UK. Yeah. And it's still, and the American version, hi, big boy. Oh, he's so <laughs> cute. I love cats. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the American version is still filmed in the UK. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, I think it's probably easier because they already have the building, mm -hmm. all the, you know, all the crew and all all that over there. So I just think it's easier for them just to produce it over there. Uh, plot twist. You get to mm -hmm. appear on uh, The Circle. However, you're not you. Can you tell us <laughs> how yes. you played on that season? <laughs> so I played as Lance Bass because, <laughs> I mean, I think that they were excited to have me on because of my job. It was kind of, it's kind of a different job that not a lot of people have. But then they were like, let's kick it up a notch. And would you want to play Lance? And I said, sure. I mean, if there's somebody I know second to myself, it's him. And I asked him about it. And he was totally on board. And yeah, so I played as him and it was so fun. It was fun not to play myself. It's funny before I met with you today, I, um, mm -hmm. In doing my research, if you will, I um, thought, well, I'll just kind of look back on the season and just review some highlights. But mm -hmm. I honestly, I was like, again, captivated and glued. So I mm -hmm. was, it was just like, and I know the outcome, but I'm right. like, I don't know <laughs> if it's how it's edited or um, the players or all of the above. And you mentioned mm -hmm. Big Brother. Mm -hmm. The circle is unique in that there's no real villains and everyone is just so charismatic mm -hmm. and fun what, what was your experience like and how successful were you at playing uh Lance <laughs> first of all um, <laughs> I was I had a great experience I I really really had so much fun it was because I often see the other side of the camera right like I've been with Lance on sets of game shows and you know, when he's hosted things. So it was, and it was also very different and really hard for me to have it be about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting my hair and makeup done and I'm, you know, doing this and that. So that was weird. Um, it was nice, but it was, it was just, I don't know. I did. I wasn't comfortable with it at first. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, it was weird being alone for all that time. I mean, I like being alone. Don't get me wrong. But when you're, alone and you have to verbalize everything because that's you know what you're communicating with the, the people watching the show mm -hmm. that was kind of weird but um I liked it you know I did a puzzle I'm horrible at puzzles and they asked if I had wanted one and I said you know all right I'll have one but give me like a 250 piece puzzle this thing was like 1500 pieces and when I, you have a daytime and a nighttime producer so my daytime producer would give me crap about it all the time because I was so bad. He'd like, he'd come back the next day and I'm like, I got 18 pieces, you know? And he's like, no. So when I, I got, um, I was marginally successful being Lance and I did get, um, I forget. I'm trying to think of the term. Oh, blocked. I always say evicted because I'm watching big brother right now, but sorry, sorry. I got, I got blocked and uh, I wound up, staying and playing with jack mm -hmm. who was playing a girl mm -hmm. and we created this character john so by the time that i went to go play john i hadn't even finished the puzzle yet and i was so sad i thought it was going to be waiting for me like they were like surprise you know here's here's the puzzle but no so i never got to finish the puzzle I was so close. well and i think um prior well in season one i don't think we saw mm -hmm. anything happen uh similar to what happened to you and jack mm -hmm. and that you were both blocked and uh -huh. presumably not going to be on the show anymore. Yeah. And the producers uh, arranged it so that you continued to play as yeah. John, as it's you said. So fun. And I don't think we saw that in season one. If I can, no, recall. I I don't <laughs> think season one had that twist. Yeah, no. and John and and you're partnering with Jack Atkins. Um, mm -hmm. This leads me to my next question: How was it staying in one room? with him and creating this persona of the gay psychic John. <laughs> it was, it was, I know it's so funny. It was so much fun. Like I, you know, Jack was 20. Like, wow. I mean, he wasn't even legal to drink uh -huh. and I was what 42, 43, whatever I was. And 
when I was talking to him, I'm like, I could be your mom. Like, this is so weird. But he was talking about college and his frat experience and like, you know, and, and it took me back and I'm like, I don't feel 20 years older than you. It was, it was so weird. Um, but he's, I love Jack to death. He, we had so much fun because he's really like goofy. He's really good at impressions. And so there were scenes like where they play music and we dance. And I mean, I just was dying laughing. I like fell over twice. He made me laugh so hard. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's captured a lot on camera. He seems quite the cut up. And it seems like you had good chemistry with each other. (laughs) We did. We had so much fun. There was uh, two bedrooms in the place, but mine didn't have, it had a camera, but it didn't have like a, a TV screen. So whenever like we do something, I like run into his room or we go in the kitchen or, you know, whatever. But, um, but so that was, that was good. I mean, it would have been odd sharing a bed with someone you've just met, (laughs) you know? So, and he made, I always say this in every interview, he made the best breakfast sandwiches in the world. He'd make one for me every day. I like to clean and he liked to make food. So that was kind of like, we'd trade off. So it was serendipitous. Well, it was. That's, and that's wonderful. And in, in rewatching the season, I felt mm-hmm. again, the your catfishing, we haven't said that yet, mm-hmm. but you're catfishing as this character, John, and you make it to the finale. We um, did. How collaborative was that effort? I mean, did you really share in creating this persona or was, how did that work out? What, what was that balance? I guess I should say. Yeah, we did. Jack is really like a wordsmith. He's so good with words. Mm-hmm. And so he would often like say, like he, he'd be the voice of John, but we'd <laughs> kind of come up with things together. And I would take notes of like, Terry was our husband and we have this many kids. And so yeah. I was, I did a lot of the note taking and like trying to keep everything straight. Cause that's like hard. Cause with Lance, it's like, I just knew it. It's second nature. But with John, he wasn't a real person. And there was one point where I was like, you know what? I love John. Like, I want to meet John, <laughs> you know, even though he's this completely made up character and everybody else grew to love him too. Like we made it to the finale. That was like crazy. And it's a testament to your partnering. So although maybe, uh, uh, Emily and Lance walked so John could run, you know? Was... Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and well, we had such a good time. Yeah, well, and that, mm-hmm. I, it's so wonderful to hear. Um, I, and I, I don't have this on my list, but was there mm-hmm. a lot, when you're filming a season mm-hmm. of The Circle, say, is there a lot of downtime or is the camera always on you? Well, the cameras are always on, mm-hmm. but there are times where they're like, okay, we're, we're done for like an hour or whatever, but it's a lot as with filming anything, a lot of hurry up and wait, you know, like where you think that you're going to film at at this point and you don't for, I mean, maybe hours, there's no clocks. So I don't know like how much time will go by, but I'd read, I'm a, as you said, a huge reader. So I think I finished seven books (gasps) in the two weeks that I was there. Yeah. Oh my God. I just read. I would just like, you know, sit there and read. And Jack and I would play trivia. He taught me how to play chess. So it's like we, we got to do fun things like that. And how many weeks you just said it, but I think I misheard it. I feel like it was two weeks because I really? you had to quarantine for two weeks and okay. then you played. Like the game was about two weeks. I think I was just shy by a couple days. That's interesting because from, and again, there's like 12, 13 episodes and it feels uh-huh. like much longer, but it's all, it all happens within a two, two week period, which is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just today realized, I think you placed fifth, you and Jack <laughs> in the finale. <laughs> we, did. we knew though, that because we were the new people in. Sure. So we were like, there's no way that we're going to win this. I mean, let's try, but like, we, we weren't like heartbroken because we didn't really expect to win again and two seasons have elapsed since then so Mm -hmm. that kind of leads me to my next question i know from observing some of your interviews um Mm -hmm. you support lance of course you've done the circle but what's on the horizon for lisa del campo what is it a reappearance on the circle or do you have other projects in the work i mean i don't because i didn't set out to to advance my career with this I just really wanted to play I love games like running charades mafia heads up like I I just I love games and so this was just kind of an opportunity for me to get out there and like play a really fun game that I would never otherwise do you know um so I just 
I'm still, you know, Lance's assistant. I, I like that. I am like, I'm kind of getting, trying to get more active on social media. It's just, it's so unnatural for me, social media, like to, to talk into the camera and I don't know, it just, I just get really self-conscious and really insecure doing that. So it's like, I just, I'm trying, but it's not the easiest thing. Well, and it's funny to hear you say that because social media to me is like the new currency Mm -hmm. and there are people uh, who are, you know, in their late teens, early Mm -hmm. 20s that are masters of that. And it's how people cast things anymore. You know, how many followers Mm -hmm. do you have? But I'm realizing how difficult it is just to stay present and active mm-hmm. on social media I mean who has the time that's what I, I mean that's what that is why it's so many people's full-time job because yes. it is like you know Lance is super active on it but sure. it's it there's a lot of stuff that goes into it you know and I just I don't know it's not I mean I don't I would rather spend that time like with my friends or reading or watching sure. tv I just, I don't have, I guess, the drive to do it. But again, like I'm trying because I know that you can monetize it. Like you can, I mean, if if you really put in the work in, you know, it's like you have to hit the algorithm, right? You have to, it's just like, a, there's got to be a perfect storm of things to get so many followers. And I just don't know if I have that in me. Well, I found you very captivating on the oh, thank you. So, <laughs> so I'm one of your followers. So oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, I like you. I haven't found out what that perfect storm is, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just like because I mean, and it does affect you. Like before, I was on the circle. There would be like a month, a year, I would just take off of it, and so I wouldn't know a lot of things. Like I'd have friends get engaged. I'd have friends get married. And I wouldn't know because I'm not on social media. And that really makes you take a look and say, well, then obviously I'm not putting in the effort for these friends if I don't even know that these things are happening. Or it's a mutual effort, obviously. Yeah. But I just, and I try now to, when I'm at a concert, I this is when I notice it the most, I'll maybe take video of one, two or two songs, but then I'm like, I'm putting it away and watching it like I think it was Ed Sheeran that said something like I want to see the world through my eyes and not my camera lens Mm -hmm. and that kind of got me thinking about it and that's when I was like yeah you're right like I want to enjoy the concert I don't want to enjoy it through am I ever going to go back and watch it no like I I never have so (laughs) it's very insightful what you just said and and you mentioned concerts and it's funny everybody has their device out and they're like attached to it Uh sometimes I don't think people realize just the memory alone and the experience and not having to be tethered to a mobile device or otherwise it just kind of it's it's feels kind of inauthentic like there's like it takes away from your your experience like I know that you want to share the experience with all of your followers and yeah and things but it takes away from your experience Right. Like I want to like talk to my friends and enjoy the music and, mm-hmm. you know, eat pretzels and you do whatever. <laughs> but sure. when, when you're tethered to your phone, you can't do that. Cause then it's like, you take the video and you try to post it and you can't post it cause there's no service. So you're trying to like, it just, it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I don't know, maybe it's age. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but, and I also have a hard time with the likes. Like if I don't get, x amount of likes you you feel bad you know you're like why wasn't this interesting why did only x amount of people see it and i just feel silly like at at 44 years old like letting that affect if i'm happy or unhappy i don't know but i do think that there's tremendous value in social media it just I'm trying to find where I fit in. <laughs> well, and you you bring up a good point. I think there are those out there that are so connected to that. If they start to lose followers or likes, et cetera, it affects them mentally mm-hmm. and their yeah. and their psychology. So mm-hmm. I think we're okay. We're okay, Lisa. You and I only I think being so moderately too. successful <laughs> social media. <laughs> Just ride Lance's coattails. And I know, I know. Like there you go. I mean, because obviously my posts with him are the ones that do the best. Right. You know, obviously, but, 
but it's weird because one day you could post this, like me and my dog Leona and it could get thousands of likes. And then a day later, if I post it again, it gets 200 likes. Like, right. like I know that there's algorithms and there's, you need to be on Instagram for 15 minutes before you post. So you have to engage. It's just, it's like a huge complicated algebra problem. And I just, I would just rather post it and just post it. You know about it. Yeah. People have it down it. to a science and they do. Uh, if you have any tips, write them in the comments. Below. I know. I know. Like help, help us out. Help and us it's out. The editing. The editing yes. too. It's like, I can't, I mean, I'll post a 60 second TikTok that's taking me four hours to like figure out, you know, cause it's like, you have to time everything so correctly. And right. I don't know. It just, it's maddening to me. Well, I'm in, I'm inviting you to collab. So if you ever want to do a TikTok yes. lightly or something, <laughs> we totally should. I mean, I come to I I will be in Vegas at some point. So, oh yeah, that would yeah, be, that'd that'd be I fun. Would, I would I would welcome that. Well, I just have one more question for you, yeah. and and uh, I came to learn that you have a beverage of choice that you enjoy greatly. Yes. I have a beverage of choice that I love. I've graduated from your favorite. What is your favorite, favorite soda, Lisa Del Campo? Uh, Diet, Diet Coke. Everybody knows. I have like three Diet Coke sweatshirts and I love them so much, but it, but it's specifically like I have today, McDonald's, not an ad, Uh, not an ad. They don't sponsor me, but there's something about the fountain and McDonald's is magic. You know? Yeah. Speaking of social media, I saw somebody, uh, Actually, who's local to Las Vegas, uh, mm-hmm. imbibing a McDonald's Sprite, you know, and something about the mixture. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just different. <laughs> well, and I, I don't know if I saw this or read this. Uh-huh. The straw mm-hmm. that they have at McDonald's, the opening's like a tiny bit bigger than a normal straw. Yeah. And that makes it better, too, apparently. But so I, I don't know. Well, I I was a longtime fan of Diet Coke, and I don't know if you've yeah. experienced it yet, but I have now since migrated over to Coke Zero. I have like I do love Coke Zero. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, but I I am one of those weird people that uh-huh. likes that diet taste. Okay, I know it's super weird, but like I don't know, I like it. Interesting. Well, maybe that's our collab. You and I fighting yes. over which is better. <laughs> Yes, taste we test various, you know, different <laughs> diet cokes and in Coke Zeros from various establishments. <laughs> I, uh, I'm happy to do that with you. Well, Lisa, I that think it's so appropriate funny. for us to end here, and it's been such an, a pleasure to chat with you. And Me thank too. you for giving so generously of your time. And everybody, okay. check out Lisa at. Uh, uh, well, first, do you have any? Speaking of social media, uh, mm-hmm. offhand, is there anyone, any one of them that people can find you at? Yes. Yeah, so on TikTok, I think I'm Lisa Del Campo. And on Instagram, I'm Le- Lisa D. My roommate called me that in college. And when I got the Instagram account, I was like, oh, uh-huh. that's fun. But now, now I'm like, I wish it was my name, but it's uh-huh. fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and then um, my Facebook, I don't really use it. It's mostly for my friends and family and Twitter. I'm at Lisa Del Campo, but I really just retweet and, and re- that's like where I get my news. It's from Twitter, but Twitter is such a violent place. <laughs> like people just let it all out on out. Twitter. Well, and we could probably do a whole nother hour on Twitter alone. So if yes. you ever want to come back on Netflix and yes, build and the, the will... Twitter edition, we can talk about it. <laughs> yes, we. I'm like, did we even talk about Netflix? But we did. We talked about the circle on Netflix. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. 